So this is the story of my brother William and what we're going to see is when he was from around five years old and it was a regular evening, like it was nothing unusual, it was completely normal behavior for him and I think he was autist as far back as I remember from the, t from the day he was born. I think. So what we've seen now was his usual behavior and it was not just five minutes there where he would play around with his arms or being in this, I don't know what you call this, trance-like state. And he could do this for, I mean, the whole evening and maybe stop up in five or six seconds if you just stopped in and then he would play on with his, with his body. So that was everyday behavior. I, I was uh, in, a, in a very, very, very mysterious world because I, I, I have a lot of, uh, a lot of difficulty with, which, uh, which I'm uh, observing the, the world around me and <laughs> uh, I saw my thoughts, I saw, I saw what I was thinking, I hear what I was thinking, so it was uh, all, uh, it was all mixed up. And uh, I was in my fantasy world all the time, I have a very big difficulty by, uh, by uh, talking with people and observing, uh, observing the, the world around me and the so when he was around f four years old I think he was some of the behavior though that showed that he was he was pretty uh, unusual child was for example I I was eating a piece of his cake and he would freak out for three days in a row but he was hysteric in three days and another incident that was even worse was uh, we were at holiday. I think we was in, um, I think it was in France, in Paris, and he got a T-shirt on that he didn't want, and uh, he didn't spoke for three months. You couldn't, you couldn't threaten him. You couldn't give him candy or anything. You know, he was very fond of sweets, but you couldn't do anything to make him one peep of a sound. So that was pretty unusual. So when William got older, I, th I think it was quite the same behavior and uh, he was very closed, like he, he would sit for a whole evening just playing with his keys. And still when he was 17, 18 years old, he was, he was jumping around with, you know, ah, like this uh, and making weird, uh, weird movements with his head, the whole, his hands were just sitting like this the whole day. And so I think it was pretty much the same behavior that he had, but his, uh, his stiffness got, got worse and worse throughout the years. The older he got, the more ro robotic-like his body language was, his uh, body movements was. So, um, and he would, what he would, the activity he would engage in was computer games and playing with himself, so it was very isolated. It was completely closed here. You couldn't even contact him very much. He was he would play with his things and and you had very, very short conversations with him. And when he moved to the dormitory he he was he was opened up a more a little bit more, but it was like a new world for him and all of a sudden he, he had to cook and he had to clean for himself and all all the things and he, he did very very badly at school. He, he was uh, almost getting thrown out of school because it was it was too much for him also uh, with everything and he would sleep all day and um, yeah it was
was very worried about me because I thought that something had to be done. So I was very worried. And then I then I took a course in French craniosacral, and um, I just I just came home late at night after I think it was the first day, and I tested it out on my brother, and um, I saw some big big changes. So I worked a little bit on his neck and something with his uh, the bones and the in the in the head, and after that he he just he looked me straight in the eyes like. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen him done that before. My big brother Thor has, uh, has been doing the finance and cryo therapy on me and has uh, been doing uh, lots of uh, yeah, giant steps. <laughs> uh, I worked on, gave him some sessions and I, I realized also that I had to I had to do something more and I, 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 was, I went to Stanley's place and he worked on him and he worked on him maybe he, he did a long session with him. I think it was an hour or something. And uh, then, uh, then Stanley uh, <coughs> told me uh, at my birthday, actually, it was uh, it was the third February, and uh, it was it was the first time, and uh, something something uh, something very funny happened because uh, my mind started to. To repair itself, uh, because when I when I experience negative or uh, uh, confusing thoughts, I uh, uh, it it just uh, fixed fixed it, uh, made it positive very quickly before I even uh, uh, thought about it. it. It was very it was very freeing. And um, after that, there was really big changes, and he was now I could communicate with him. It was like. Um, Something I don't know much about it, but something happened with his communication skills. That before it was like uh, he communicated with sounds and uh, movements for a particular. Um, if he had to explain something, and he made he made sound instead of words uh, for a particular word, and now I could communicate with him uh, like we understood each other. He he just got better and better at at in life. It was like he, I think he he's learning how to live life because he had never. I mean, before everything was it was a totally new life. Like he he perceives anything different now, and if you see him today, he's really he has a girlfriend and he he does very very well at school and. He lives by himself, but he's always surrounded by friends. And if if I'm visiting him, he we have a social life. I he has a lot of friends coming over and like regular kid, and he, he go uh, goes out on dates and uh, so that's quite a new life. And I really really think that this cranial sacral work should be all over the world because it can help a lot of people. Just I I've seen the work, I've seen the results, and I know that can really help a lot of people.